see anything? All clear. Really? The reversing must have got all the junk out. Okay. We stopped the boat, put it in reverse. Most of the junk came out, but since there's not much waves or wind, thought we'd go look. Everything's good. All right. Back to writing in your journal, huh? Back to writing in my, I was just writing in my journal about how like, taking care of the boat takes up a lot of our time and energy, but I hope we have time to like, do more artsy stuff and bam, stop writing in the journal because we hit something. <laughs> It is uh, 6 09 a.m. and we are approaching Cologne, which is one of the biggest ports in the world. It's on the north end of the Panama Canal. And we're going to Shelter Bay Marina for a very quick and expensive stay uh, before we go through the Panama Canal. So right now I need to call the lady at uh, Crystal Ball Signal and let her know that we're coming in. Crystal ball signal, crystal ball signal, crystal ball signal. This is the sailing vessel Pelican. Pelican, great start, we're saying go ahead. Hi, we are eight miles from the breakwater entrance, approaching from the east. Our intention is go to uh, Shelter Bay Marina. So you are calling me back when you are closer, two miles, two miles from the breakwater entrance for traffic over. Okay, will do. Gotta call back in when we're closer. Cause she's like, you guys are slow. <laughs> so I think we at least got both that maybe two hours of sleep. Ready to go navigate this channel. Look at all these cargo ships. Tocata, tocata, One night sails are always rough. No time to build a rhythm. So we got the Star Crestral and the Lowlands Dawn to our uh, starboard there. So there's Cologne and Cristobal. So Cristobal is the port, I think, and Cologne is the town. Nice, bright, sunny day. Come through the breakwater into the marina. So we are following in the Star Kestrel. Lots of traffic here. After we made it through the breakwater, we tied up the Pelican in Shelter Bay Marina to prep for the transit. The first step was to schedule the ad measurer to come do some paperwork and also to physically measure the boat to see how much it will cost to go through the canal. Here they're making sure we're under 65 feet. We also did work in the air-conditioned cruiser's lounge. We enjoyed jungle walks through the jungle surrounding the abandoned U.S. military base Fort Sherman. The base has been abandoned since we gave back the canal and the jungle is slowly overtaking the buildings. On our last hike, we spotted the yellow-throated toucan, my Mayan spirit animal that I've been searching for since Guatemala, and howler monkeys, which are considered the loudest land animals in the world. Soon the transit date was approaching, so we stocked up on groceries since we would be providing meals for six people for two days. Our lines and fenders arrived and we picked up our crew, two experienced line handlers that we hired, Goody and Junior, and a volunteer line handler, Jana, who was a German backpacker. We went out to anchor, picked up our advisor, and headed for the first set of locks.
common that they send multiple yachts through together. We got kind of lucky, and both times we rafted up to boats that are bigger than us, so they had to do most of the work. You're not told what the configuration will be until the very last moment, and things change, so you always have to be ready to go through by yourself. This is a $2 million catamaran. I told him not to scratch my boat. Saying goodbye to the Atlantic Ocean. When these doors close, that'll be the end of it. The fresh water from Gatun Lake will flood the lock. Um, and we will no longer be in the Atlantic for the, and its connecting seas. Well, the lock is full and the Atlantic Ocean is behind us. We're now sitting in freshwater, Gatun Lake. We have two more locks to go tonight and then three more tomorrow to go back down. the first set of locks on the first day, we spent the night in Gatun Lake. The line handlers stay aboard and the advisor typically requires a hot meal. We've heard some stories that substandard food can make the advisor angry, so I thought it was safe to make my mom's Italian food. Came out great and the Panamanians loved it, even taking some photos for their Instagrams. The next morning we awoke tied to the morning and had coffee while listening to the eerie sounds of howler monkeys in the surrounding jungle of Gatun Lake, the largest man-made lake in the world. Day two of the Pelicans Panama Canal Transit and we are tied up to a mooring here in Gatun Lake. Everything went smoothly yesterday on day one going through the Gatun locks. 
but um, it's a beautiful morning and we're looking forward to making the rest of the transit to the Pacific Ocean today. Yeah, we have like a five hour motor through the lake and then we'll reach the Pacific side locks, go through three more locks on the way down and then we'll be in the Pacific Ocean. How's your transit going so far? Great. So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's people coming. And the cabin ship. A lot of different boats here. Where can you find boats? We are in the Galboa Cut. We just struck a palm tree log. That's exciting. We're going a little faster to make sure we uh, don't miss our ship. And uh, we wouldn't have seen it anyway. But it wasn't, a, it wasn't even our worst log strike. bit of a rainwater runoff. That's what fills up the lake. Obviously when it's really raining it's an entire waterfall. You can see where the erosion occurs. Uh, in the background you can see the ship uh, we're supposed to go through the locks with. So we gotta make sure we sort of uh, stay in sync with him. We don't want to lose him. He's our ticket through. He's our ticket to the Pacific. So uh, we'll be in front of them this time because going down you're always in front of the cargo ships, going up you're always behind them, so we'll be in front. So we gotta kinda stay in front. You can see we've protected our solar panels so that uh, when they throw the monkey fists they don't hit the solar panels. Now the downside is uh, we're not generating any solar power so we had to run the generator a bit. But uh, yeah, it's been a good trip so far. Hopefully it stays that way.
second to last set of locks. Mira Flores. So it's this lock and then one more. You can see in the background here, there's a bunch of people at the visitor center watching us. And we were tied up to Ghost, 122 foot uh, super yacht. They are doing most of the line handling because we are just a, a small sailboat on their side right now. So the lock is full right now. It's going to start draining soon. And then we'll be one lock away from the Pacific Ocean. Cool. Things are getting really exciting now. We're in the last lock. The cargo ships are getting in position and when those doors open, we'll be in the Pacific Ocean. As you can see, the cargo ships get pretty close. Anne was not too sure this one was gonna stop. Here we go, ready for adventure. After passing the Balboa Yacht Club, it was out to the anchorage. It was looking a little stormy. We had pretty good weather the whole time, but of course, right at the end, caught a little rain. Our advisor got off here, and then it was just me, Anne, and our volunteer backpacker line handler. You need four line handlers, so we had to hire two and ask for one volunteer. Anne counted as the fourth. up as we approached the Las Brisas anchorage outside Panama City and we were just in time to watch our first sunset in the Pacific Ocean. Next up, preparing to cross the Pacific Ocean.